Well, this is my first SMTOH building video in Roblox Studio, so I'm pretty excited. Today we're going to be building the first, like, floor or so of Tower of the Planets. I talked a lot more about my plans for the future of this game and how I'm going to be making it and stuff in this video. The SMTOH game on Roblox is linked in the description. I've made it public now. Please go play it. I mean, there's not much you can do yet, but you can play what I'll build in this video. So currently I'm in Roblox Studio, and this is the starting place of SMTOH. So it's like the place or server you're in when you first join the game like, from the game page. This will eventually be the ring select, but for now, it's a base plate with the spawn location. This sign says, Welcome to Shark's Many Towers of Heck. This game is in a very early stage of development, but currently you can playtest one tower, Tower of the Planets. Now, if I step on this right now, since I'm in Roblox Studio, it's gonna do this, and if we look in the output window, it throws some errors. This does work. The thing is that in... Roblox Studio, the teleport service, like, you can't get teleported to another place, just the way it works. But in the actual game on Roblox, this does work. I have tested it. Tower of the Planets is a soul-crushing tower for Ring 4 of SMTOH. In this tower, you'll venture across the solar system to many different planets and moons. It's based a lot on the planets, the orchestral suite by Gustav Holst. This video won't include much building of parkour, but mostly just getting used to Roblox Studio and trying to figure out how to use the JTOH tower kit. To go and edit Tower of the Planets, I need to go to View asset manager and double click places here's tower of the planets which i've created previously and now it'll open a new window of roblox studio so this is the jtoh tower kit and i've placed everything like all the scripts and stuff in the places they're supposed to go over here um as it tells you to in these like readme scripts and stuff there is a frame here just because that's how the tower kit is but later on tower of the planets is not going to have a frame but i'm not going to worry about deleting that right now because the way Tower of the Planets is going to begin is you're on the International Space Station. In this Google Doc, I've planned out, like, what each floor is going to be, so it says Opening, International Space Station. You begin Tower of the Planets on the International Space Station, or ISS. There's a window through which you can see Earth, but you can't exit the ISS to get to it. It'll come back to Earth later. So the first thing I need to do is build the ISS. Now, I don't want to just add a part th with this button. I want to duplicate it from the ones here, because I need to make sure it's, like, still in the same folder. I mean, with a part, it would still work, but, you know, other things like this, if they're in the wrong folder and stuff, it might not work right. So this is just the basic part. I can press Control D to duplicate it, and I'll build, I'll build the ISS, like, over here for now. By Google searching International Space Station, like, the first result was this, like, 3D model from NASA. I believe the place where, like, humans are is, like, here, maybe? So yeah, it's kind of like a T-shape or an I shape, I, I don't know. But yeah, it's like sort of in the middle, and I'll build the solar panels later. So let's see, I can build like this middle section here, I guess. An obby creator would tell you the like dimensions of the part like here. Now I gotta check in the properties window. Uh, I'll get used to that, I guess. 25. That means I wanna make this one 25 on that axis, and now I can just duplicate that. I think this should work well for the gameplay. But looking at this 3D model, that's kind of like this part. I'm not sure if you can go to here. It, it looks like you can, I guess. So the solar panels, I need some over here, and I need some over here. Looking on here, this appears to not actually be centered here. But I think building it here, it'll just look better if I center it. And we'll make this be one 190, maybe, should be good. Which is like... 70 or 80 studs off of here and so that part i just added is this thing now i gotta add the solar panels so that should be easy enough i guess i can build it similar to how it is here like i can have like two of them on a single one of these things i think the best way to build this is just building it once like on here and then duplicating it like probably just two solar panels at a time okay so in scale mode i can see the like selection box thing so i can just like use that to make sure this is lined up there we go give it a stud of difference and then over here i don't really need the selection box i can just see that it's a stud i'd kind of like it a little bit more i'll move it over like three more studs okay then let's see i can add this thing that looks kind of like a truss in the center conveniently trusses are a thing let me just duplicate it from over here now think about this tall should be good now just put that one there okay so now i'll actually put in the solar panels i'll give them some sort of texture that looks kind of like this later for now i'll build it with parts like just a simple one let's see if i go like a stud up and then make this like 0 0.05 i gotta remember it works a little bit differently in roblox studio when you control scale to go in both directions looking at the size property here will help me remember so i have have my move snap to grid set to 0 0.05 so by holding control it adds one so well 0.1 so that means it's scaled out 0 0.05 in each direction instead of alternatively 
scaling out a total of 0 0.05, so it scales it by 0 0.025 on each of them, which is what happens in Obby Creator. So this, of course, uses a lot of parts, and while I don't have to worry about part limit, I do still think a texture is just the better way to go. Like, I think that would also look better. So we have the solar panel. Let me select this, and I'm actually going to press Control g to group these. I don't think that should break anything. I guess I can make sure it doesn't, but I'm going to call this solar panel, and then move this one over here, and I can duplicate these to do that. Now I'm going to duplicate both of these and get them lined up the same over here. So is that that looks lined up? So then I need to move it over a stud. So just do that twice because it's I have a 0 0.05 snap to grid. Okay, now select all of those. Control D, Control 4 to go to rotate mode. Rotate it 90 degrees like that. And then just make sure this is positioned right and not inside that other part. Okay, well, this kind of looks like the ISS. Let me try something else that might help. Duplicate this part and then scale it in to be 8x8. Eight eight. Then select all of this, but then unselect that then move these all up so that that temporary part is lined it up lined it up like that now unselect delete that does that look any better not really <laughs> all right well does this look any better i made this section like smaller instead of like 30 by 30 it's now like 15 by 15 and also what i think may help is if i select all the solar panels and then rotate them there i think that looks a lot more recognizable i mean it's still not exactly great but I mean, these are angled on the real thing, so now what I want to do is, this thing was 8 by 8 I think, right? Yes, okay. And you're gonna actually go like inside this little section here, but only like here. You'll see why soon. Then I spent a while trying to figure out how buttons work in the tower kit. There are a lot of things I need to figure out how to do, like making a part that gets deactivated by a button be transparency 1 and not transparency 0.6, which I know is possible, but I'm not really sure how to do that. I guess I have some research I need to do. But what I did make was an invisible button that opens this area with the teleporter to floor 1. I also added some signs that give you an idea of what Tower of the Planets is and what you're supposed to do on this ISS part. So this was not floor 1. This wasn't an actual floor. It's just like a little intro opening thing. Floor 1 is the sun. I read something somewhere shocking that said something like if you're too close to the sun you'd burn to death on one side of you facing towards the sun and freeze to death on the other facing away from the sun so the only way you could survive would be if you spin really really fast thus the gameplay on this floor will include almost entirely spinning parts the non-spinning parts will be conveyors that pull you toward the sun kind of like the black hole floor floors eight through nine from citadel of the infinite abyss however the conveyors here will be a little faster than in citadel of the infinite abyss if we scroll up a little bit in this google document you'll see the diameters in studs i was planning to make these back when i was planning to make this tower in obby creator i had said i was going to make the sun be 200 studs in diameter the first number in the parentheses is how many earths that is where earth is 65 studs and then the second number is how many earths it actually is wait i thought it's supposed to be like 3 million earths fit in the sun hold on no it's like 300,000 i think maybe i like just divided the diameter maybe that's what i did it was probably that but i don't believe i'm going to go with that size anymore but what i will do is sort of use that like to get an idea so it's going to be neon so let me go ahead and set the surface back to studs I mean smooth. I know I don't technically have to do that because it's neon, but I like to. When you set them all to smooth, the surface, like little thing, darker gray boxes, it just disappears. And if you add a part, just like by clicking that button, this also will not have the surface property. So in order to get one that does have it, what you have to do is you have to go to the command bar at the bottom here and you have to type that line of code. What that's going to do is it's going to add a part probably at zero zero. Yeah. And you can see it does have these surface properties. Now make it yellow, now make it neon. Now what's the largest size this is gonna let me set this to? I think it's 2048 by 2048. Yeah, just about. That's a little bit extreme though. We'll go down to like 500 by 500. And I guess I'll make it can collide false. Not that it really matters because you won't be going like on top of here. So I actually don't need to make it an insta-kill either. Conveyors shouldn't be too difficult, I feel like. And also, I'm going to build this, like, quite close to here. That way it appears larger than it really is, like, because forced perspective. Okay, let's see what we have here. So we have the actual part itself. We have client object script and another client object script. But the second one is within the beam object, which I believe is this, like, texture. Looking at that one, this appears to be a pretty simple script. What does return mean? Uh-oh. Okay, so that one appears to just be some sort of calculation that just makes this beam, like, match up correctly 
to the conveyor speed. This other client object script, which is inside the conveyor object, uh, C frames. C frames are so confusing to me. Uh, I'm just gonna stop there. But I think what I need to know just for making a conveyor in this tower kit work the way I want it to is literally just know how to click this and then set the conveyor speed. Like, let's see, if I just make it like 100, does it also change? No, it doesn't change the beam speed. I think it will once I run the game. If I click run to basically stay in this view and not go into like player view, huh? Why did it just disappear? Oh, it went into replicated storage, which makes sense. They're called client objects. The client is like the player, basically, rather than the server. Like, currently I'm in server view. It moved that whole folder to here. Interesting. Since it's no longer in the workspace, that's why the conveyor appears to have disappeared. What about everything over here? Yeah, everything over here except these parts, in fact, disappeared. Okay, fine. We'll just go play here. That way I go to client view. Okay, we can see now the conveyor is actually here, and the beam is going faster. So yeah, it just like, the code that I actually understood within the beam object, it's not gonna run this code until, like, the game starts. That's why this didn't actually change anything. Can I just delete this? Oh, and these attachments. Okay, these, I think, are necessary for the beam to work. Let me bring that back for a second. Yeah, look at this. We have these attachments. So attachment zero is one of these, attachment one is the other. So, since I don't want there to be a beam, I want this to be an unmarked conveyor, I can just delete the beam, and I can delete the attachments. Now, speed, how much do I want this to go? Let's go, like, I said it was going to be faster than it was in Citadel of the Infinite Abyss, which was, like, only, like, 10. We'll go, like, 45 here. Let's see how well that works. Let's go play here. That should launch me pretty fast, yeah. How easy is it to stay on this platform? Yeah, that should work. As long as I make all these conveyors be at least like, you know, 5x5 five five or 4x4, four four, I think that'll be good and not too annoying. So I'd figured out the conveyors. Now I had to do the same with the spinning parts. It helped to look at the readme script to figure out how to use some of these client objects because for some of them it tells you some information on how to do that. Then I built a quick section of parkour for the sun floor, but it will be extended later. But with that, I think it's time to play everything I built in this video, even though it's not really that much. Currently, there's the spawn location here, so you'll, like, spawn right here. This is where the start of the tower will be. Well, I mean, I'll probably move this whole thing later, but, like, you'll spawn right here in the International Space Station when you first enter the tower, which will be when you go through the portal. So, like, the actual spawn location where you spawn when you first join the Tower of the Planets place will be in the lobby. But for now, it's here. Welcome to Tower of the Planets. Today, you will venture across the solar system and explore not only each planet, but also many of the moons and more. Also, much of this tower is inspired by the planets, a suite for orchestra by Gustav Holst. We hope you enjoy our tower. To begin, you are currently aboard the International Space Station. Before this door will open, you'll need to find a special space suit that will allow you to survive the extreme conditions of space. So, it's just over here, around the corner. Uh, you just have to stand on this thing, because you'll press the invisible button. Later, there's gonna be, like, boxes and stuff around here, and there will also be a window somewhere that you can, like, look out over Earth. Oh yeah, and also it's gonna, like, change the shirt and pants you have to be, like, a spacesuit thing, which I'll make, and probably also put on sale in my Roblox group, like, if you wanna buy it as a shirt and pants to wear, like, not just in this tower. But the button you press opens this door, and then you can go on this teleporter, which takes you to the sun floor, which is very short at the moment, but like I said, this will be extended later. You got all these spinning parts, and be careful of these conveyors, and currently, that's the end. Well, that's about it for today's video. Hopefully you enjoyed it. Please like and subscribe if you did. Make sure to check out the SMTOH game on Roblox as well. It's linked in the description. Thanks for watching, and have a great day.